Imagine a man coming out of his home, all drenched in blood and with a deadly look. That's what the community in Fresno, California experienced on March 12, 2004. What could this man have done to make people cry for days? What could he have done to make every mother of Fresno cry? Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am going to tell you all about who is Marcus Wesson and why he is considered the Vampire King of Fresno. So, make sure to sit back and stick with me till the end of the video so that you don't miss anything. Now, without any further ado, let's dive straight into it. It was just like any other day in Fresno, when the police department was called for a child custody case. So, no such precautions were taken. After all, who could have thought a person could kill his own children? Well, that's Marcus Wesson for you. When the police arrived after the complaints by Sofina Solorio and Ruby Ortiz, who were her very own nieces, the man in the gray deadlocks not also seemed tall, but very deadly as well. However, he came out of the house and after a few times he went back in. But nobody believed what they had seen and heard after that. It was only a matter of minutes when the police heard the gunshots and a man covered in blood came out of the house. He had killed his very own children aged from 9 to 25 years old. But what shocked people the most was that all the children killed were his very own. If that is not bad enough, he had also two of his daughters. Not only that, but he had also impregnated his nieces when they were only 8 years old. So, all the children that he killed belonged to his daughters and nieces. But wait, things got even more curious as when the police entered his home. They found the dead bodies of the children in the back bedroom, but this bedroom was not an ordinary one. It was filled with antique wooden coffins, and the entire picture of the scene was terrifying. Trust me on that. After leaving the military, Wesson moved into the Rosemary Solorio's home where she was living happily with her eight children. Little did Solorio know that all this would turn into a nightmare for her daughter Elizabeth. Wesson started sexually abusing her when she was merely eight years old. He continued doing this and manipulated her at the same time. He was 27 years old when he married the 14-year-old brainwashed Elizabeth and to everyone's surprise, shared 10 children with her. They never got to call him their father. Yes, you heard me just right. Wesson had a cult-like system in his household where he told all 18 of his progenies to call him Lord or Master. Not to mention he also considered himself as Jesus. Not only that, but he also thought of Jesus as a vampire and believed that drinking blood could make one immortal. He had married two of his daughters named Sabrina and Kiani, and his nieces Rosa and Solorio as well. Just like that, all his child brides provided him with the children. But all of them considered it the children of the Lord, and that's what he told these girls while impregnating them. Ortiz was the one who confessed that Wesson had been her since she was a child, but he had told her that it is nothing but a father's love to his children. He told her that there was nothing wrong in his touch, and when she came to age he somehow convinced her to marry him. That's what Wesson said to Ortiz. God's people are becoming extinct. We need to preserve God's children. We need to have more children for the Lord. What does a 14-year child know much about anything? She was convinced enough and gave birth to a baby boy named Daviv with Wesson. But all this wasn't just random for Wesson, as he had been inspired by David Koresh who was a leader of the cult named Branch Davidian who killed himself along with his 80 followers in a fire back in the year 1993. Wesson also considered him making children for the Lord and was upset how people didn't accept him and destroyed what Koresh had created. Koresh died to end the siege by the federal agents, but that's how the people from outside thought about the household. An angry tall man, dictating to the women of the household as the ladies of the household seemed rather happy. As Kiani and Solorio insisted that everything that used to happen in the household was after an open discussion. There had never been any, or any forcible action. Not only that, but they also claimed that the family was completely democratic. But of course, how could they justify them getting pregnant by their father? Well, 
The girls had the answer of artificial insemination, but all that didn't start after he came back from the military. Yes, you heard me just right. Wesson didn't get these ideas after returning from the military as he had already been doing things like this since he was only 8 years old. Like the video so far? Then make sure to give this video a big thumbs up as a little action from you can help our channel grow immensely. Now let's get back to the video. That's exactly when he met Elizabeth, his first legal wife. Elizabeth Wesson told how Wesson told her that she belonged to him and was his when they were just a child. Which means that Wesson had imaginations in his mind of him being the superior being. He told Elizabeth that God had chosen her for him so they should get married. And guess what? Elizabeth did marry Wesson just at the age of 15. Still so young to be married to a man who is surely of not this world. But this marriage took place a year after she got pregnant with Wesson's first child, and who would have guessed that Elizabeth would have given birth to more than 10 children just at the age of 26? But what about his sons? Why were they never in the picture? Well, you will be amazed to know that according to his sons, Wesson was the gentlest person they had ever known. Yes, I know it's hard to believe, but it is what it is. According to his sons, he was the best father, and he had sent them to another state as the contact between male and female siblings wasn't appropriate. Well, says who? So, the male children had an idea about what was happening with their father and their sisters. Wesson had also announced that he would move to Washington State, which really didn't please Solorio and Ortiz, who had given their children to him for proper care. So, this entire drama led them to file the complaint of child custody against him, and that's when both poor mothers got to experience the ultimate nightmare. Since there was no evidence for Wesson killing the children, and the lawyer also stated that the eldest sister killed all her siblings before killing herself. But of course, it was also just a theory. Wesson was convicted for the mass murder of his very own children, and was sentenced to death by lethal injection. San Quentin Prison Death Row is the reciting place for the mass murderer now, and we believe that he deserves that for all the and sadness he brought to his children. Well, do you think that it was the doing of his eldest daughter, or do you think that Wesson was the one behind it? Let us know in the comments. With that being said, it's time for us to say goodbye but don't be sad as we will be back with another amazing video soon. Also, make sure to hit the subscribe and bell icon button so that you don't miss any updates from my channel. See you all soon. Thanks for watching.